أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ما دي respected brothers and elders listeners the five verses of the holy Quran that I have recited are from uh, the opening verses of a surah which is called Surah Al-Alaq uh, which is a Makki surah consists of 19 verses and one ruku and also at the end it has a sajda tilawa in this surah now looking at this surah and the, uh, the surahs that come before and how the rabd and connection is with this surah we find where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the human and if the human does wrong then what will happen to him and those that do good deeds how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them and in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the human also. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given such things to the human which uh, gives him um, this, that he's more uh, better than uh, the other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Surah Al-Alaq, we look at the meaning first, and Alaq means a clot. So, the reason the rabd and connection with it is the second verse of this Surah begins with خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ alaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the human from this clot. The human creation and how the human has been created is in different stages which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in Bada 18 in Surah Al-Mu'minun in the first ruku that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the human so the first stage is nutfa this little drop now from this little drop thumma khalaqna nutfa ta'alaqa then it becomes a clot of blood and then what happens ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا النُّطْفَةَ عَلَقَ فَخَلَقْنَا الْعَلَقَةَ مُضْغَ Then it becomes a lump of flesh. So, this changing of how the human is created. And then from this lump of flesh, uh, flesh ثُمَّ خَلَقْنَا الْمُضْغَةَ إِضَامًا Then the next stage is bones. فَكَسَوْنَا الْعِضَامَ لَحْمًا Then, on top of these bones is the flesh that we have. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the human and these are the stages how the human is born uh, and created and from this one is alaq which is related to this surah, the clot of blood. The stages that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the human. Now, as many of us know and most Muslims would know unanimously universally that the verses of iqra the first five verses were the first revelation unto our beloved prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was gifted and granted this prophethood by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and thereafter the first revelation that came was these five verses so now we need to know a little bit of how this revelation came <coughs> pre-revelation what the Prophet Sallallahu had done which comes in the narrations in the books of hadith like uh, Imam Bukhari Rahimahullah has recorded in his Sahih also so before revelation we find in the narrations that the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam six months prior uh, to the, this revelation the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would see dreams and these were truthful dreams meaning whatever he would see at night it would happen during the day so this continued for six months through dreams thereafter as time came closer hubbiba ilayhi al the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam began to like seclusion being alone and away from others where did the Prophet ﷺ go? He went to a cave. The name of this cave is Ghari Hira, and which is in Mecca. Some may, when they have gone for uh, Hajj or Umrah, may have seen this. Now, in this cave, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ would stay, some say a week, and the most popular uh, uh, tradition is for a whole month. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would take his provision with him. And this whole month he would spend in seclusion in this ghar, in this ghar hira What would the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do in this cave? Now many different scholars have mentioned different things. So some say uh, the most popular that he would contemplate about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala until the time came where the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in the cave of Hira and he had some there was some water either he brought this water from home or there was water that was there that came from Jibreel alayhi salam and he heard a voice and the angel Jibreel alayhi salam came and he said ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam looked around and Jibreel alayhi salam came and he said to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Iqra as we can see the verse Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq that recite the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as we know he was unlettered he did not have a teacher and at that time it was very common uh, in the Arabian land where there were very few people uh, that could read or write and and this was the greatest miracle and Nabi al-Ummi, the unlettered. So the Prophet ﷺ did not have a teacher, did not uh, the, uh, read or write. So, uh, and the Messenger of Allah ﷺ understood this and mentioned Ma ana biqari, that I cannot uh, read, that I am unlettered. So Jibreel alayhi salam embraced the Prophet sallallahu alayhi very tight until he had felt some pain and said again Iqra again the response of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was Ma ana biqari diamond lettered and then again Jibreel alayhi salam embraced the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam very tight the third time more than the first and the second time and said read and then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam read these verses Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq all the way till the five verses so un universally unanimously the, so the scholars agree that these five verses were the first revelation unto our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam thereafter there is a little uh, difference of opinion some say immediately with this the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, Surah Fatiha was revealed uh, and Surah Fatiha was the first Surah that was revealed as a whole Surah seven verses and thereafter the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was told about the way of wudu and prayer and uh, then some uh, then this uh, the duration of wahi had stopped 
and the most popular opinion was almost three years and the Prophet ﷺ was sad during this time and thereafter the verses of Surah Al-Muddathir came where the Messenger of Allah ﷺ was told to go out to the people and warn them about the punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of uh, at the time people that were involved in idol worship and associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when these verses were revealed unto the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the angel Jibreel alayhi salam had gone, now the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned home. When he returned home, uh, he felt uh, feverish like he had a fever. And he came to Umm al-Mu'mineen, Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha. And he had said to her, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, that wrap me up, put something on me, you know. And he had explained the whole situation, what had happened. That, and part of it, the Mufassirin mentioned to see what is her response. That if his wife will support him and listen to him, then what will happen? It will be easy for others to accept this also. And she was a supporter of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She encouraged him and comforted him. And also, not only that, she went to her cousin. And her cousin, uh, his name was Waraqa ibn Nawfal. At that time, he was very old and he was blind. And he previously had followed uh, the idol worship, but then at the time the religion which was right, uh, the way of Isa alayhi salam, he had turned unto that and many scriptures that he had written in, uh, in Arabic. So he was well learned, very experienced. She had called him and he came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And when he was informed about uh, the revelation and he took an oath and said, This is the same angel that came to Musa alayhi salam. And thereafter, he informed and he said to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, If I am alive, indeed I will support you and I will help you. But unfortunately, after a few days, uh, the Mufassirin write that he had passed away. And he had mentioned to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that if I was alive, I would support you because a time will come where your people will take you out from Mecca and make you leave Mecca. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was surprised. Our Mukhrijiya, that will they really take me out and make me leave Mecca? When I'm, I have good character with them and um, I have supported and helped them and he was known as Sadiq, the truthful, Amin, trustworthy, that will they really get to that stage that they will take me out from Mecca? And also uh, in Ma'alim al-Irfan, <coughs> Uh, the book of Tafsir mentions that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had seen uh, Waraqa ibn Nawfal in his dream that uh, in a very good state. So this is the beginning as we see of revelation and how it came onto our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So <clears throat> we find in the Holy Quran uh, some surahs begin with praising Allah like Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Surah Al-Fatiha uh, Then we find uh, like Alhamdulillah Alladhi Khalaq Al-Samawati Wal-Ard Then we look at Surah Kahf Alhamdulillah Alladhi Anzala Ala Abrihi Al-Kitab Sometimes in the Quran Surah begins with Alif Lam Mim Alif Lam Mim Sad Qaf Noon Yasin Hamim um, and some so very there that we will find where a surah begins with the command and one of the surahs is this surah iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that read in the name of your lord who created everything allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything now when it this uh, with the name of your Lord, there's many different meanings the Mufassirin have mentioned. One of them is that when you recite Quran, also read Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And also, in this, there's a message that the Quran is from is the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. 
So when you are actually reading Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, you're saying in the name of Allah. Meaning when you recite the Quran to anyone, or when you give the message of the Quran to anyone, you are letting them know that these are not my words, so do not object. These are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you reject the person that is saying the words, you're not rejecting them, you are rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words. So this is part of the meaning that when you're reading Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, letting someone know that this is in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is the one that has created everything. So we find there are four types of uh, Tawheed and two of them even the Mushrikeen agreed upon. So we have um, one which is uh, Khalaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything. They agreed upon this also. In the Quran Allah mentions وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ وَلَا يَقُولُنَّ خَلَقَهُنَّ الْعَزِيزُ الْعَلِيمُ they agreed upon that Allah is the one that created the heavens and the earth. The second thing they agreed upon was the existence of Allah. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala existed, they agreed upon this. But the two they did not agree upon is the ibadah and tadbir. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates everything. And they associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this. So the message that we learn from the first verse Whenever we recite Quran and read Quran, the person that may be listening and rejects, we let them know beforehand that this is in the name of Allah. What I am reciting is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the true understanding and the ability to spread unto others. Ameen wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yusifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank <laughs> you.